If your company has a compliance program, then your company needs compliance training. If you want your program to be a success, that training needs to be the best. Join Sean Rogers and Tom Fox on Excellence in Training and learn just how good compliance training can be. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox back again with Sean Rogers for another episode of Excellence in Training. Today, we're going to take up the always uh if not difficult, certainly interesting question of training frequency. Um, That leads to questions like, or at least issues like training fatigue, overtraining, too much training, but uh, frequency of training is a critical element that the regulators look at, and it's something that uh, I think training professionals are cognizant of it, and I really uh, am looking forward to seeing uh, what your thoughts might be on this, Sean. So with that incredibly long-winded introduction, welcome back, and what are your thoughts on training frequency? Thank you, Tom. Yes, that is an issue that we all struggle with, is how often and to what level of depth should the training be repeated in a, in a compliance training program? In my previous podcast, I used the analogy of windshield wipers when I was discussing training effectiveness. And I think that the windshield wiper analogy can be extended into the discussion of talking about how frequently um, and how in-depth training should be repeated. Um, my perception, and, and correct me if I'm wrong or if you've seen something different in the industry, is that we've been conditioned as a compliance profession that we have to continuously repeat our code of conduct course and our anti-bribery course um, over and over and over again and because for some reason we feel like if we're questioned – we're going to need to be able to show that we've done these courses. And I want to challenge that a little bit because I think that by repeating the same courses over and over and over again without changing up the learning objectives, even if you use a different format, maybe use video or gamification or you use um, adaptive or online training, um, I think that that you get a a point where the, the user base or the employee base says, I've heard this over and over again. I know it. Why am I constantly being told about this? And so if we go back to the windshield wiper analogy for a minute, typically you don't run your windshield wipers when they're, when it's not raining. Um, there's one case where you do, and I'll mention that in a moment. But um, you turn the windshield wipers on when there's rain threatening the visibility of your view in your vehicle. And your windshield wipers, um, you might just flick them on once to get rid of a little bit of moisture. You might turn them on a low speed. You might turn them on a high speed. You've driven in Houston, and I've driven in Houston, and you've driven in situations probably where your windshield wipers could not keep up with the amount of rain that was coming down. And so I think what we need to find out, figure out a way to do is to apply training to the degree and to the frequency that the risk is present. And um, you would never run your windshield wipers all the time. Um, And you would never say you need to turn them on when you get in the car just to make sure they're running. You use them when they're needed. Um, If you run them all the time, it would be very annoying to you and the driver, and it would eventually wear out the system. Um, And I think that's like repeating training when the risk is not constantly present. Um, it, it, it leads us to the overtraining problem. It leads to a waste of time and resources. And I think it le- leads to training fatigue. Sean, can I uh, stop you there? Because I'd like to pick up on the um, windshield wipers on a point you raised yesterday, um, or rather in our prior podcast. Uh, in the prior podcast, uh, you articulated that uh, windshield wipers were there to uh, provide uh, visibility for the driver. And the training, compliance training, was there to uh, keep awareness of the risk issue, whether it be uh, IT security in the form of phishing, whether it be uh, corruption and bribery in the form of the FCPA or uh, uh data privacy, data protection, whatever it may be, but keep the awareness of that issue in front of the people that needed to be aware of that. That could be a high-risk employee. That could be a, 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 a employee sitting in a Renaissance Tower in, in uh, Detroit, or it could be a salesperson here in Houston. Um, is the training frequency, uh, does that turn on uh, things like, um, whether an employee is continually in high-risk uh, FCPA environments, such as countries that are prone to corruption. 
uh, and I guess the other analogy I would draw from the windshield wipers is sometimes it's not raining and I use my windshield wipers and that's simply to clean off the windshield. Exactly. And, uh, but that leads to your point, which is it enhances driver visibility and it's, it's visibility. Uh, and then if I took that same analogy over to, to training, keeping that awareness in front of the person who's being trained would seem to me to be a valid consideration in your train, uh, your frequency calculus. I think it is. And I think that's where we're trying to go um, in, in our training program is that when a new employee joins the company, it's probably very warranted that they get a training curriculum that covers all of the, the risks the company faces over a period of the first several months. And so they would get the in-depth courses. And I think it's wise to rotate those in-depth courses to your general employee population over a period of several years so that you can keep the courses updated with the latest developments in the law and in the, in the industry risk, um, but also so that they can they, – once in a while, they go, they go into another deep dive. But to continually repeat courses year over year and some, sometimes not even – and change up the courses, um, it, I, I think is quite ineffective and a, and a waste of resources. Um, there's a famous quote by Samuel Johnson, the British philosopher, that said, people need to be reminded more than they need to be instructed. And that's a paraphrase. I'd have to go get the exact quote. But I really like the idea of, of training in depth somewhat infrequently, but reminding more frequently. And so that might be something completely outside of your training program. For example, maybe one year you do an in-depth anti-corruption course. Um, The next year you mention anti-corruption as a reminder in your code of conduct course. And then the third year, you don't even do a formal training on anti-corruption, but you message it as part of your compliance week and you publish articles um, on your internal website and you send out manager minutes that they can use in, in team meetings and such. And so I think that the awareness is almost more important and the reminders are almost more important than the actual repetition of the class. And again, that goes to the risks. You want to apply the windshield wipers when the risk is, the, is present. You, you keep people aware of, how, of what the risks are with your, with your risk profile and you keep them aware by reminders and so forth. You don't necessarily need to use a training vehicle every time to do that. So let me see if I can put this in FCPA ease uh, for, and then uh, get your comments. We, uh, the, the, and this is what the government expects under an, uh, best practices FCPA compliance program. And they expect a couple of things when it comes to training. Number one is effectiveness. Uh, we talked about effectiveness uh, a little bit in our prior podcast. It seems like frequency plays a part in effectiveness. But also they talked about targeted training. And it really seems to me that with your reminders, you're moving towards a more targeted training because an employee uh, who is in accounts payable or rather in IT security in uh, the corporate headquarters in Detroit uh, may not need as many reminders as the uh, BD representative who is traveling uh, to the Far East, uh, to West Africa, to South America on a regular basis as well, so that uh, the reminders you talk about can increase in frequency uh, in an appropriate manner uh, uh, if they're kind of short, sweet, direct, uh, and it's just to make them, if we go back to the windshield wiper analogy, to keep that awareness in front of them. Would that be uh, kind of a fair translation? I think that's exactly what I'm trying to get at in that, for example, back to the FCPA, when when you do the general awareness training to your complete employee base, they just need to know of the activities that could bring on an anti-corruption or a corruption risk. And so that's, that's the broad brush. That's the whole employee base that gets that. But then you need to go up what I call the training maturity continuum. And, and you need to look at the employees that are going to be put in situations where they're going to be exposed to corruption risk, and they need to have targeted training to deliver to them, whether that be through their management, or whether that may be a roadshow where you go out and actually do in-person training, or whether you could even go one point farther and embed compliance at the point of compliance risk. And what I mean by that is perhaps when you know someone's traveling to a high-risk country, that because they are making travel arrangements, something triggers the system to give them a remote reminder about the anti-corruption risks that happens. And I can actually add to my, my windshield wiper analogy on that. The newest vehicle that I'm driving right now um, has a feature called RainSense. 
And that means that I can just have the wiper switch always on to this mode, and they, it never goes off until the system detects moisture on the windshield, and then they kick in. That would be like the holy grail of what I would like to do for compliance training is that, that when the risk rears its head, training comes right along with it as a reminder or refresher or as a warning perhaps that you're now in a situation where you've got to be very careful. Well, Sean, this has been a fascinating uh, uh, exploration of a, of a topic that I think worries many compliance practitioners. Uh, perhaps some of the remarks and your thoughts on this uh, will help take that worry out because there's a wide variety of, of tools that can be used in training. You simply uh, talked about the formal training and then reminders, but within that continuum or, or those two data points, there's, I think, a even greater spread of uh, tools, strategies, and tactics that uh, the training professional can bring to bear. Yeah, I do get some concerned when we, uh, as a profession, think that a great online training course is all we need to do. Um, I think that's just the start, and we move up the the maturity continuum and the risk profile from there to really fully address the risk and really mitigate the damages and the risks that are involved. Well, Sean, uh, unfortunately, we're in the end of our time, but I wanted to thank you and I look forward to continuing the conversation. Thank you, Tom. My pleasure. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Excellence in Training. Help get the word out by rating us and leaving a review.